Welcome to One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Steve here, Kim. Hi, everybody. We're here to do a review of Paint the Roses. So this is a game we've been playing the past few weeks on the stream channel, YouTube stream channel. Mm -hmm. And so we thought we'd summarize our plays with a quick review. Sounds great. <laughs> so welcome. If you're first time joining, we like to do a top five review format. So what that means is we'll list the five things you need to know about a game, starting with number five. Moving all the way up to number one, along the way, we'll talk about if each of those points is a pro or con with us. Yep. Hi, so, Ryan. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, Ryan. So this has been recorded live on our stream channel. So if you happen to catch any of our views live, feel free to join and add your own comments or ask questions. Point, counterpoint, argue. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Friendly agreements. <laughs> but this will also be part of the podcast as well. So it'll be fun. Okay. I th and this is the first review, so a little bit later we'll do a look back review after you know, a month or so pass and see if our thoughts have changed over time with this one. Yeah, getting more plays under the belt. Exactly, exactly. Okay, let's dive into it. So before we get to number five, let's talk about the uh, yeah. what it is. So yeah. Paint the Roses. Hey, thanks for the sub, by the way. <laughs> That's an old one. That's old? Yes. Aww. <laughs> but they still sub if you sub us. Do that. Sub. That'd be great. So I don't feel like an idiot. <laughs> I, if you ever just listen to podcasts, we have the old video playing. playing. The old video. <laughs> and now I'm red. Um, <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. Sub to the channel. <laughs> okay. There you go. Uh, Paint the Roses. What is it? It is a logic deduction cooperative game. The theme is set in Alice in Wonderland, which is very unique. Like, I don't see too many of those that theme in the game, so I really like that part of it. But it's all about giving clues to the players to have them guess what cards in your hand. And as you do this, you'll be able to score points. And the goal of the game is to complete the garden as you're trying to add shrubs to the queen's garden. But the queen is also moving along the score track, and if she catches up to you, Everyone loses the game. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, you go ahead and do that. It'll make me feel better. Ryan is going to unsubscribe and resubscribe to make you feel better. Thank you. Well, sorry, I got distracted. No, totally fine. Totally fine. But yeah, so that is what it is. Uh, we are racing around the track trying to get points and trying to beat the queen before she catches up to us. Mm -hmm. And when you place that place down a shrub tile on the board, you will put a number of clues on it that will hint at people what your card is because it will look at what matches the tile you place and the other tiles next to it. So pretty, pretty straightforward. But uh, if you want to see how this works, we do have a rules overview bit video, a quick one on the in the stream channel and a few plays of it as well. Yeah. Okay. Let's jump into the actual review. So starting off with number five. Number five is going to be a con. Starting off with a con. And this might be specific to the deluxe version of the game, because that's the one we have, is the box does not close flush. Yeah. This is a minor con. <laughs> I know. It's not even, like, really game-related. It's just it's a not. manufacturing issue. Yeah, and I, but I think this might bother some people. It kind of it bothers, it bothers me. you. I it think does bother It does me. bother him, because he's very structured, and it's got to be perfect. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of that, but it, it's just the fact that, like, when we got our copy, I can tell that there was... It, 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 so what it is, is in Deluxe Copy, at least, they had this really awesome insert. It's like the whole game production, the art, the insert, the, the quality of the components is top-notch. I have zero bad things to yeah, say about that. They're very... It's solid. It's great. Yeah. So I love that aspect of it. But they, they have a giant insert in there, and what I found out, it's like this cool like heart, like reverse heart shape, whatever it is, to hold all the, the components in a nice, nice fashion. But it is a little bit higher than what the box lid can fit on it. So like it's kind of making the center of the box cover bulge up slightly, at least in my copy. And because of that, if you put weight on the edges, it will it, it has started to tear a little bit on the uh, edge of the box. Mm -hmm. It's pretty minor, but I want to bring that up to you so that if you do have the copy, you might want to be aware of that to kind of avoid potentially further. <laughs> further yeah, issues. new subscriber, Ryan. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan, for resubscribing. <laughs> so, but yeah. yes, so that that is something to be aware of. Um, is number five. It's a minor con, but it is a con nevertheless. So I've heard heard other people have had similar issues with the box not being 
perfectly flush. It's close, though. It's very close. Yeah. But like you said, all in all, the game pieces of the deluxe version are very top-notch. Yeah. Like, they're high-quality plastics, and it's, yeah. And then it's got that dual-layered board, so your pieces nest mm -hmm. into the board. Um, so when you're putting your tiles in the garden, they don't shift around, or someone gets really excited because you got to guess wrong or right, um, you don't knock the table over. Yeah. So. I mean, if... If it comes down to like, hey, we can give you all these nice components and this beautiful like like artwork and everything, uh, at the cost of having a little bit of box lift. Honestly, I'm okay with it. Yeah. It really comes down to it. <laughs> but I'm just letting people know. So Okay. Alright, so enough of that. That's our number five, a con. <laughs> so let's move on to number four. Number four. Okay. So moving from con to a pro, and this is gonna sound weird. But the pro is Lack of player scaling. That's how I'm framing this. It sounds weird. I know you had yeah, a problem I, with this. When you were telling me this, I was like, what do you, what? <laughs> so explain it because the to me, the game scales based on, and you talk about this later, it scale, it's scaled fine for no matter what player set number or count that you have. Correct. We played it at the lower end and towards the higher end as well. And I have no problems with how the game plays at each player count. What I mean by this, though, is the game itself. Like, I'm so used to games being like, oh, yeah, if you're going to play a four-player game, uh, the boss is going to have extra health. Or you make sure you deal out less cards to each player or something in the Yeah, game. so you're saying you have to change something based on the player count on the game setup or right. the way the rules apply. Or, like, for example, you were explaining, like, the queen doesn't move extra spaces because you have more people. Correct. She moves based on how well you are progressing in the game, and that's regardless of player count. Exactly. So your lack of player scaling, as you call it, just means you don't have to adjust the game for your player count. The game does that by itself. Yes, or doesn't need it, really, is what it comes down yes. to. Yes, yeah. And so that is, is, it's a weird point to bring up, but it's a point that I found found really beneficial because the cool thing about this is that means I can have people in the game drop out mid game or join this mini game and it's totally fine. So the kicker is you have these whim cards that people are trying to guess. So as long as you, so your, your card gets guessed and before you would draw another card, you can drop out of the game and it wouldn't affect the game whatsoever. Now, what about when you're playing with a two player game and you have those green cubes? Or oh, that's fair. That's game? fair. I guess that one would, would matter. Okay, so that... But higher player counts, you, you can drop in and out. So would you call that player scaling, though, or is that just that's a true. special rules? No, that's true. No, that is a little bit player scaling, because that way there's a chance where you won't be able to guess all the time. So, yeah, for that one, you do have a little bit player scaling. But the nice, the point I'm getting at is, like, the, the cool, you can actually have people drop in and out without affecting the game dramatically. You can play the two-player way without using those cubes. It's mm -hmm. totally feasible. Uh, it'll be a lot harder. For sure, because okay. you're forced to guess. But yeah, that is that's a big big pro for me. Okay. Okay, let's keep going. Number four is pro. Let's move on to number three. Number three, going to another pro, and this is the logic deduction part of the game. And to be frank, I'm kind of surprised it's this high on the list because this is the central mechanic of the game. This deduction element. I'm mean, like normally this would be like number one thing because this is what you come to the game for. But I actually found other things that were that were surprising and very impactful to my play. Yeah. But yeah, this is this is the meat and potatoes of the game. Like it's really engaging to say, okay, I've got got this card. I need to get everyone else to guess this. And I can pick a shrub tile and put it on the board, and there's a lot of places you can place it on the board and put a number of clues on it to to help people discern what's in your hand. And that is a very engaging puzzle. Yeah, and then even like considering what you don't pick from the greenhouse is Correct. in itself a clue. And then like, you can really dig into right. like the thought process of the people you're playing with. And that could send you down a completely wrong rabbit hole. It's like uh, Princess Bride, right? Didn't... The, the wine is for me. No, no, no. It's, but you would think of that. So it's actually in front of you, right? You, you got to understand how sad I am. And Why? You missed my rabbit hole. <laughs> oh, I missed it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I totally missed pun. <laughs> oh, good, good one. I That's apologize. Good. Yeah, no. So what, I, what I was saying is, like, you can really. It's it's interesting because if you look too far, uh, we were playing with my mom, mm -hmm. what last week or over the weekend or whatever, 
And you would start, you know, talking about the thought process that you're trying to interpret her moves. And she'd say, well, don't think too hard about that. <laughs> you know, like, just like, all right, you can't have table talk. But it's like funny moments like that where you're really trying to deduce what people are thinking and getting you to guess. Um, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. It, it does take a little bit to get used to it. I think that's probably where this can become a little mixed for people um, because you're not just trying to guess a single shrub tile. And I had to, like the, the logic or the language in the game is the clues can be color to color, shape to shape or color to shape, depending on easy, medium, hard, and some combinations of, of that. But you're always looking at two things in the game that people need to guess, not one. And sometimes I had trouble like explaining that a little bit or it's a little bit of a, it, we're so used to just trying to guess one thing in your hand. Yeah. Right? So like when I first started and you, you said that to me, I, my brain initially went, Shape to shape means it has to be heart to heart or diamond to diamond or it's pink to pink. And I wasn't intermixing all the variety or all the options, which right. thinking back on it, it's like, well, duh. Yeah, you should be doing that. But it's interesting because my parents, like I said, we played over the weekend, they started with the same thought process where mm -hmm. it was identical items matching together. And then it wasn't until like a, like a quick show of hands, like round being like, oh, OK, now we get it. Um, but it's not a hard learning curve. It's just no. there is one there, yes. but it's not, I wouldn't say it's hard. I agree. Okay. And I, like you said, it's solvable just to like, when you teach in the game, go through an open hand practice run of like, hey, I'm, I want you to guess this one card. I could put tile here, put clues on it, and just walk through the, the breakdown of how that works out. And then, then you know, re-rack and re-replay, uh, reset the game for the actual play. I find that works really well, having to do like one or two examples of that, and people catch on pretty fast. I mean, uh, my our son, who's only seven, he can do this as well, which is really is awesome. Is that almost a question? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, how old is my child? <laughs> <laughs> but um, he, he struggles with the hard ones, so that's that's challenging. That's for, understandable. Yeah, it's very difficult. But, but yeah. The, the easy he's got down, and then the medium he can figure out, so... He does, a, does a, it's very very approachable in that sense so i'm sorry um, there's a really big frog on our window <laughs> do you see that oh yeah okay um so yeah so pro number three logic deduction it is the it is what the game is it knows the game knows what it is mm -hmm. and really accelerates at that definitely okay let's keep moving moving on to number two number two is going to be a pro as well Lots of pros in this one. Well, you really like this game. I like this too. Spoilers, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but number two is cooperation. Because we're obviously cooperative game players. Um, and this was a big surprise for me. Um, I'm used to hidden hidden information games where... like Think of something like Codenames. Where I need you to kind of guess the right cards on the board. But I'm giving a clue. And then I'm sitting back and, and waiting. You know, as listen to you talk or figure things out. In this one, what you're doing is you're grabbing a shrub tile, you put it on the board, then everybody at the table can put clues on it that match mm -hmm. their card. And then after that, everybody at the table can guess. Obviously, you can't guess your own card, but you can be part of a conversation to guess anybody's card. And the nice thing is, you don't have to guess your card. Or if it's your turn, you can guess any player's card. As long as one card gets guessed, that satisfies. So you can guess more than that, of course, which is really fun to try to do. But that, that was a big surprise, where you are engaged regardless if it's your turn or not. Yeah. I mean, assuming people put clues on the tile. or But at the same time, by not putting down a clue, you're also giving information right. as well. Exactly. So, again, that goes back to the, the deduction and you know trying to remember what in the world happened three turns ago and who put <laughs> what tile down. You're like, oh, my gosh, what is going on? Um, but, yeah, I, I completely agree with that analysis where it's very cooperative. It's very open in terms of communication um in solving the puzzles or the cards granted again like i said you're not really supposed to have table talk and, and giving away more information than you're supposed to um but that's also the fun of it it's a social game in right. that aspect um which i like a lot because it's different than several other games in like your collection where mm -hmm. it's you know sometimes i just want a really good social chit chat light game but i say light but you do have to think a little bit about this yeah you know? this is a brain it'll, it'll turn the brain for sure 
Yeah, Definitely. you'll have to think. Um, but the nice thing is, it's it's a like you said, a social event. Like it doesn't overstay mm-hmm. its welcome. It actually plays pretty fast, to be yes. honest. Yep. Um, because it is, you just have to fill the sh- the garden full of shrubs, and if you have more players, you're still putting. It'll be you're having less turns overall, but you're still actively engage in the game regardless of what you turn or not mm-hmm. because you're still drawing cards potentially drawing cards you're still guessing even if it's not your turn which is awesome yeah so yeah number two pro cooperation i was very surprised at this big and big big one on top of that cooperation they have all those other like expansion mm-hmm. options where you're trying to complete a different side objective yeah and that in itself adds more to like a teamwork effort because mm-hmm. say you want to get um each of the color tiles in a certain orientation well you're going to put one down and you can talk to your teammates essentially mm-hmm. about strategizing on how to obtain those objectives um so that's a nice added layer to the game if you want to do that on top of the, the regular game yeah the nice thing about that is it's open com- com- communication for everybody because that's not hidden yeah right? yeah it's just out there saying hey we got to yep. do this for sure so. cool excellent Okay, moving on to the final point, number one. What is the biggest thing you know about this game? This was an easy choice for number one, is the most standout feature in the game, in my opinion, and that is the pro is self-correcting queen speed. And what I mean by this is, in the game, the queen's gonna start off by moving one space, and she moves one space at the end of every person's turn. And so hopefully you're gaining at least one point. So you, you, know, you maintain that distance or ideally gain, get more of that distance. And what happens in the game is as you score points, you're going to be crossing certain thresholds where there's a rabbit st- waiting there. When you cross the rabbit space, you will then take a rose petal or rose bud and attach it to the queen. And now it's going to increase her default speed by plus one. So then just start moving two spaces by default every, every round, every turn. And then there's a you cross the rabbit again, three speed, four speed. So as you continue scoring more and more points, the queens can move faster, faster, faster. And the net effect of this is at the end of the game is almost always a close game. It's very, very tense because you've got this lead. You can gain that lead in early game, but towards the end, she catches up real fast. So it doesn't take much. Yeah, she can. Although the last game we played, we crushed it, right? Yeah, so yeah. there are, and I that can happen with yeah. the expansion modules, I would say, where you could get kind of lucky in how that pans out and you could, you know, maintain that lead because we were playing with the Mad Hatter. Mm-hmm. And so we actually had less tile shrubs that need to be added to the board. And so what generally happens is as, as the game goes on longer and longer, that lead gets eaten up. And because we had less overall turns, uh, we were able to still maintain that lead uh, for longer. Yeah, yep. down to it. but like you're saying, as as you progress in the game, you know she's not going to let you completely run away from her because right. she's going to increase her speed proportionally to where you are on the victory track, mm-hmm. and it just keeps things interesting. And it, it's such a brilliant uh, system in this because if I'm doing poorly, I'm not scoring as many points, and it's she's not going to move that fast, like, or she's going to take a lot longer to increase her speed. So no matter how you're doing the game, poorly or doing really well, she's going to adjust her speed to meet your current skill level, the group skill level. For a bit. If you continuously do poorly, she is going to just trounce you. Yeah, it's true. That's true. You know, you ha- there's a little bit of a, a ramp up, I would say. Yeah, you cannot stop her from increasing speed forever. She's going to do that eventually. So you're right. Yeah. At some point, if you don't score those bigger point cards so it kind of pushes you towards those which could be a con for some people if you don't want to play with the hard cards for example you you really need to be able to score some of those on occasion to, mm-hmm. to uh, do well in this game but the how the fact that she self-corrects your speed based upon the skill of the the uh, the uh, people playing the game the group as a whole is absolutely brilliant this the biggest pro causes close games a big 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 fan of this yeah i might call it more of like a pacing mechanism sure. that they made as sure. opposed to like a skill adjustment thing okay because she she paces with you until i don't know like you cross, no not with you not she, yeah not you can with gain. You, but she paces because you can gain yeah. on her so it's not pacing with you 
But her pacing will increase it, based upon... Yeah, the pace of the game, I feel, is appropriate to where you are in the game. Does yes. That, if that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's a good way of saying it. Yep. So, yeah, number one, like, closed games, it's so... I mean, that's the best part about playing a game. When you have, oh, my gosh, we won for that final turn. We got one more, one more card flip, and then we lose. And this, I feel like, is designed to have those elements. Mm-hmm. Big, big fan of it. Or you think you win and you actually lost. <laughs> that too. <laughs> we won't, we won't we talk don't. about that game. <laughs> we don't talk about that. Okay. So that is our top five things about this game. So um, let's talk about our final thoughts. You want to start yours? No, you had some other notes on there. Yeah, our final go, thoughts. Go right ahead. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, I have a question. Go ahead. So a lot of games that are you know, logic or thinking games or puzzle solvings often will fall uh, trap to alpha gamers. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that this game is protected against that? Or can somebody just dictate? So with regard to alpha gaming, I am of the belief that alpha gaming is not a game problem, but a group problem. It's a person problem. Yeah, it's a person problem (laughs) that comes down to it, honestly. Um, but the game itself, I, I don't think it, the game itself is necessarily going to remedy that per se. You can try to do that with some design elements, but ultimately it's, it's not going to be too effective. Now I say that when I'm going to counter a little bit what I said just now, the fact that you have hidden information in your hand, mm-hmm. you can't alpha game because you don't know what they have. Yeah. Really, is what comes down to it. Yeah. Um, you can still alpha game with like, well, obviously this and this and this happening, so we make this guess. So you yeah. can still alpha game the discussion that way. Oh, and but... like dictate, you know, the guesses or who car- whose cards you're going to go after. Right. Okay, I can see that. But right. I, yeah, because I was thinking that this game would be, um, we haven't seen it too much. Unless, you know, sometimes I, maybe, sometimes I myself and just like Steve are doing this. <laughs> and, sometimes. <laughs> okay, it's a lot. But I feel like in this game, I don't really have like, I, I don't have the ability to really direct it in that sense maybe but i, I wouldn't say this the apple game is a problem here at all it's really like i said it's not it's a game a, problem a, it's a it's a group problem group environment problem so i'd say okay. unless you like that you want a leader that just says here we're doing it this way no because alpha gaming is negative because it's taking away decisions from other people it's, that's why it's negative some people don't want to make decisions okay fair enough <laughs> just, just saying all right so you want to do your final thoughts on this um Would, it's a fun game. I mean, <laughs> I I know you get so frustrated because you're very analytical and I'm just like, hey, I liked playing it. Good job. Good pick, you know. Um, but again, it's a, nice, it's a fresh thing that you brought to the table. Mm-hmm. Um, it's different than many other games you've been playing. It's um, the theme is very different. Mm-hmm. I can't think of anything else that you have quite like this. Um, no. I enjoy puzzle games. Again, really nice having a conversational game, mm-hmm. group effort, um, and it's not like murder and violence all the time. Sure. Um, yes. Though this uh, one could be considered violent because, you know, the queen, you know, off with her heads, right? But uh, you can ignore that part. Yeah. That's <laughs> so. only if she catches you. Steve. That's right. You never, never get caught. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Don't let her get you. Um, but no, it's, I again, it's really well done. Components are really well made. The added expansion options that you can do, right. I think, add another layer of complexity to the game, mm-hmm. um, which is great. The fact that you can play with pretty, I'll say any number of players, which, how many players does this Two takes? to five. Two to five. Mm-hmm. Um, and the game is just ready to go. With the exception of the two player, you have those uh, guessing cube mm-hmm. exceptions. Sure. Um, makes it really easy. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So I, I get a thumbs up for this one. Good. I'm glad. Yeah, this one I am I'm big on. This is effective the summary of this is this is a strong recommend for me. Like I think a lot of people are gonna really like it. Uh I like I said, any like the game is designed, like I said, give begin back to my number one, is designed to have very tense and close games. And it's so rare to find games there's a few games out there that have that happening frequently. Uh, but this one's designed and it's built into the design is amazing. I love that aspect of it. And the deduction is very engaging. That I am constantly engaged at all t- all all turns, and also trying to remember. Oh yeah, last turn you didn't put clue down, so I meant this information. Now based upon this, I can now deduct a little bit more information about it. You get these layers of deduction going on, and then you just get like 
the cringe moment when as you're someone's talking through the thought process and you see what they see but that's not what you saw <laughs> and you're like oh crap i can't do anything about this now and just gotta let it ride and that's see right. what happens that's right uh so it's fun well and the other thing is like you guess you get, make an incorrect guess at late game it can't be can't be huge but early game um, what effectively what happens is the queen will move double her speed, and you the turn automatically ends you move the next next turn. But it doesn't. I feel like you can make those guesses, especially early game, and not feel mm -hmm. too bad about it. Yeah, because like if she moves two spaces instead of one, it's not going to really kill you. Right. Um. So like those chance those, you know, guesses where it's like, all right, you got a fifty fifty shot, and it's really early in the game. Take the shot. Mm -hmm. Just go for it ask her out see what happens and just <laughs> do it and it's not bad and you know, the worst thing that happens is she just moves twice but then late game like you're saying the tension's the real tension's real yeah you know now you're in like oh man it's game this, time <laughs> it's game time real. It's real yeah it's the tension wraps up the close game wraps up it's fantastic fantastic and it, it's fast too i feel like i I will play this game multiple times in a row and not get bored of it. So big, big fan of this one. Yep. Hey, Dan, welcome. Uh, so yeah, final thoughts. Now, I think you're going to like it. You may like it if you like, obviously you like puzzles. Like this is a big puzzle analytical game for sure. The other one is it is actually language independent with the exception of the expansions. Like there's no words on the board oh, at all. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. So as long as you're able to communicate via, um, you need to be able to talk about the, the logical deduction part of it or colors and shapes, right? And so there is some language dependency of people at the table, but it doesn't matter what language that is. It really comes down to it. Yeah, as long as you can all understand what you all mean when you're talking about the hearts and right. the colors right. and all that, that's fine. But it, it's also like age independence. So like our younger son, mm -hmm. he colors and shapes he's got those down but you know like you said the expansion cards you get into a lot of i don't say a lot of text but there's text in there that we mm -hmm. don't really have to worry about with them i didn't think about that the other thing that's interesting too is the fact that during the turn everybody's engaged in deduction and guessing if you're bad at deduction like and someone has a hard card it doesn't matter because they can help you or help with that deduction element and you can be along with them trying to understand what's going on right you don't need to be intimidated by someone taking a hard card because ever at the table is contributing to that effort mm -hmm. so it's it makes it very friendly and approachable from that side because like when we first sat down play like oh i only want to do easy cards until i get used to it but it that, that doesn't last long you can no. easily move on from that qu quickly no. and if you do too many easy and medium cards the queen's gonna get you that's right um, <laughs> And then, and like you're saying, going back to the cooperation and helping others is in the garden, if there's a tile that may not help you, but you're thinking that maybe you're trying to, we did this before where it's like, I could take this tile and really nail down what I think Steve has. And so he can put clues on this if my assumptions are correct, you know, mm -hmm. so That's right. you don't have to play for your card. Exactly. I mean, yeah. It's an interesting avenue yeah there's a lot to explore in this one for sure and the fast play time like i said it's a big big pro now you may not like this game if you dislike guessing because inevitably that's going to happen you're going to get to a point where it's like you know what it's a one in three chance or a 50 50 chance or whatever one it happens in to be. six i just gotta go for it <laughs> exactly uh it, that will come up at some point mm -hmm. and that could potentially cost you the game with the guess right it doesn't till you know late game well, that's going to impact it. Like, early, like I said, early guess, no problem. Late game, uh, be careful, right? It might, might catch you. So if you don't like guessing or being forced to do that, you might not like this, this game for that one. Um, this is also best at higher player counts. Mm -hmm. Because at higher player counts, there's a lot of people putting clues on stuff. Everyone's engaged in compensation. You can maybe you know, take care of multiple cards at one time by guessing at that everyone gets at the table, which is awesome. Um, and that also ties into the lower player count is not as well. Two player counts, I think it works fine. I've, oh yeah, we've had no problems with two players. Yeah, no issues there. But this is one of those rare cooperative games that cannot be played solo. <gasps> it's actually all co-op. <laughs> it's actually all co-op. Exactly, exactly. So obviously, if you're a solo player, you can kind of avoid this game. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you do have the opportunity to play with others, I highly recommend this one. It's really, really fun. 
Yeah, there's there's really no way to do a solo mode for this at all. <laughs> so <laughs> what card do I have? Oh, I don't know. Although it's funny because you always like look at your card, you just forget the moment it goes face back down on the table. It's like, what was on that card? And every single time. Oh, okay, now I got it. You right. know. So yeah, that's a few few examples of who may like who may like this game, who may not like the game. But like I said, overall, strong recommend for me. I highly recommend this one. It's been a blast. Can't say enough about the, like the component quality, the artwork, the gameplay, the cooperation. Big, big fan of this one. So yeah, I had a great time. And then, um, like Steve said, there are some play samples uh, that we've done on this channel. And um, oh my goodness, brain fart, Ben, Ben. Yes, Ben designer. Ben, the designer of the game, joined us for the first mm -hmm. one, and he had some really good pointers and hints. And then when we were doing the expansion, he had some good suggestions um, mm -hmm. for the Mad Hatter. Go for the keys first. Get them out of the way. Um, so thanks to Ben for, you know, contributing and helping us out. Absolutely. So. Excellent. So well, that's going to end the review for this game. Hopefully this was useful to you. And, uh, yeah, if you want to hear more about us, you can join us on the Discord and ask questions on the game. We'll be mm -hmm. sure to answer, help answer any questions there. If you're watching us on YouTube, drop a question in the comment section. We respond to every comment we get. And, yeah, go check this one out. Like I said, big, big thumbs up for me. Two thumbs up. What else is going on? <laughs> yes. So for the rest of this week, we have for tomorrow, we are going to be doing a preview play of Hacktivity, which is a cooperative um, hacking game, the theme is. You're hacking a network, and you're trying to go through a deck of virus cards before you run out of cards yourself. And everybody has a, a hacker with unique abilities. So we're going to be showing scenario two of that one. Scenario one is already live on the main One Stop Co-op Shop channel. Mm -hmm. But we'll be doing a live co-op playthrough of that one tomorrow. And then Friday we have Marvel Champions. And Saturday we've got our co-op chat. So that's what's happening this week. Did you check the T-Ball appointment schedule? <laughs> There's I... no T-Ball this week. Oh, Memorial Day weekend. You're that's right. right. Okay, that's good. Right. You're, you're good to go. I checked. No conflict. I checked. <laughs> Excellent. But that's going to end it for tonight. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you at the next stop. Bye. Bye-bye.